Thank you and a big hello from London. As I pointed out in last week's podcast, I suspected that this week's commentary would be a lot more extensive, and so it has proved to be. We have an extensive number of weekly key reversals for last week, as well as monthly key reversals for July. And perhaps most interesting of all, many of them cross over, and some, well, some well are really quite controversial ones as well. Okay, so to start with, we had a weekly key reversal up last week in the German DAX 30 stock index futures, right at the top of the market, which I have to say is an unusual place to have one. In addition, we also had a monthly key reversal up here as well for the month of July, again at the top of the market. Now comes the first controversial bit. You see, with only two and a bit days of this week just gone, we are already set up to also have a weekly key reversal for this week, such that if we close on Friday night over either over 16,562 or below 16,280, then we'd be on. Right now, we are looking at an immediate countering weekly key reversal down with all the implications that invokes. This is once again right at the top of the market. So looking at the supports below, we, they are the rising medium moving average currently at uh, 15,937 and the three points are uptrend currently at 15,877, though I'm caution, uh, cautious on the effectiveness of these supports. A similar situation exists with a close though not related product and that's the French CAC 40 stock index futures, where last week was a weekly key reversal up and July was a monthly key reversal up at the top of the market for both. Only for this week to see the construction of a gap in construction, I hasten to add, to see the construction of a possible immediate countering key reversal down. The numbers line up as follows. If we have a close on Friday night, either over 74.92 or under 74.13, then we'd be on. Right now we are looking as I've said, at a possible immediate countering with a gap, immediate countering weekly key reversal down. Let's look at some of the other markets now. And in the currencies, we had weekly key reversals up last week in the US dollar Indian rupee, to which we have seen a follow on higher, a nice follow on higher this week. This pair looked like they might be up to testing the overhead resistances at uh, 82.74, 82.81, 82.86, and maybe even as high as the 2023 downtrend, currently at 82.93. Meanwhile, there was a weekly key reversal up last week in US dollar against the Swiss franc, which has seen a nice follow on higher this week. And in US dollar against the Moroccan dirham, we also had a weekly key reversal up last week that likewise, we have seen a nice follow on higher this week. And that's from last week's lows. There were also weekly key reversals up in US dollar against the Russian ruble and the US dollar Russian ruble one month NDF. Elsewhere, we had a weekly key reversal down in Aussie dollar against the Japanese yen cross, though this has not seen any sort of follow on lower as yet, and indeed has seen an attempt higher on Monday, though this has not been sustained. Looking now at some other stock indexes, we had weekly key reversals up in both the Chinese CSI 300 stock index and the Shanghai Composite index. The initial action this past Monday looked good on both as a follow-on, with gapping moves higher in both. However, since then prices have turned lower and moved back down below Friday's close, though still within the main body of last week's action. Meanwhile, in the metal markets, we had a weekly key reversal up in LME three-month nickel. However, though there's been attempts higher this week, prices have not managed to stabilize higher, and we are back within the body of last week's action right now. I'll deal with this in greater depth in my weekly video commentary on base metals, which came out yesterday. Then over to the energy markets. 
we had a weekly key reversal down in the EEX German Power Base Month futures made last week. But then this week, well, we have not seen any follow through, but instead a reactionary move back up, though we are still within the main body of last week's action. I finally come in weekly technicals to a controversial, to put it mildly, a controversial weekly key reversal. And that is in London Coffee Futures. You see, to some, even to a large part to me, this may not count as a weekly key reversal at all. What I mean by this is I use continuation charts in all but one of my charts, whether they are daily, weekly, monthly, or more. This helps me in providing greater definition, but it also leaves gaps sometimes huge gaps due to, ch to a changeover. This is what has happened in London Coffee Futures, where we have an original changeover gap last week between 26.17 down to 24.93 that has also been partially filled in this week. The situation has caused, was caused by a midweek changeover. As a consequence, if I apply a strict ruling to my continu continu continuation chart, then we had a weekly key reversal down last week due to this gap and to nothing else. Since then, we've had a tiny follow-on lower this past Monday, but ever since we've seen prices pull back up, though we are still within most of late last week's range, and the gap has not seen any attempt to try and fill it. What is more is how this is repeated in the London Coffee monthly charts, where we see a similar controversial gapping monthly key reversal down for July, but only due to changeover and only on a continuation chart. Thus, these two have huge, really huge, big question marks over their validity. I discussed this in greater depth in my video co uh, coffee commentary published this past Monday. This completes the assessment of the weekly technical patterns and some also of the monthly patterns for July. I'd now like to give my attention to the other monthly technical patterns, of which there are quite a few. I've already dealt with the monthly key reversals in the German and French stock index futures plus London coffee futures. I'd now like to concentrate on the others and I'd like to start by looking at the UK FTSE futures. This saw a monthly key reversal up, the same as the French and German stock index futures, but it did not see a weekly key reversal up. Now, please bear in mind, this is a longer term pattern and indicator, and even so, the response this week to the monthly key reversal up has, to say the least, been disappointing. Below, we have an old hunched neckline from the November 2020 to January 2021 move, currently at 73.49, along for a pair of 50% Fibonacci lines close together at 73.77 and 73.67. Now, there is also another argument. It's a possible, out of context, somewhat descending triangle pattern with a, a base down at 72.24. Only time will tell if the latter or the former are true. Elsewhere, we had monthly key reversals down in Euro Sterling, US Dollar against the Swedish Krona, and Euro against the Swedish Krona as well. There has been no immediate movement following such longer term action in Euro Sterling, but we have seen reactionary moves back up in US Dollar against the Swedish Krona and the Euro against the Swedish Krona. Elsewhere, there was a monthly key reversal up in July in the Baltic Clean Tanker Index, which has gotten off to a slow but still positive start so far. But this is only the first few days, so treat all of this with a pinch of salt. Finally, two commodities with controversial alleged monthly key reversals in July, one of which I have already mentioned. The one I mentioned was London Coffee Futures, which had both a gapping weekly and a gapping monthly key reversal down in July, but only on the continuation charts and only because of a forced changeover. The second commodity is much like this one, 
it is a monthly key reversal down which only shows on the continuation charts and only because we had a changeover in mid-July. It is also a commodity that many who listen here will follow. It is in Chicago Lean Hog Futures. Now, you know my thoughts on this pattern. Well, they are mixed. On the one hand, it is not a true monthly key reversal down. But on the other hand, it does show up on one particular chart type, uh, continuation charts, and ones that I favor. I will only add the following. If I see such controversial patterns on the continuation charts, rest assured other technical analysts will also have seen them. And some of these may well place greater emphasis in such a monthly key reversal pattern than I do. So watch out, just in case it prompts some initially unexpected actions. As always, I'm happy to answer any direct questions with anyone who's interested. And with that, I'll finish this section from London, and I hope that you found these comments useful. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.